What if I told you that becoming a six-figure cloud engineer has nothing to do with how many services that you've memorized and everything to do with how you think? I went from earning 18K a year as an apprentice to leading cloud transformations at Fortune 500 companies. Through my academy, I've helped over 700 people make the same leap. People like Mac, who went from help desk to AWS engineer, or Jay, who went from banking to cloud. And after watching, what actually separates the people who make it from the people who stay stuck? I can tell you this. It's not the certifications. It's not the tutorials, and it's not even the projects on your GitHub. It's actually how you think about problems. In this video, I'm going to show you the difference between how most people learn cloud and how six-figure cloud engineers actually think. And I guarantee it will change how you approach this entirely. Here is a problem that nobody talks about. Most people trying to become cloud engineers are stuck in what I call tutorial mode, and they don't even realize it. Let me show you what this looks like. You sit down to learn AWS. You watch a video, S3 is for storage, EC2 is compute, Lambda is serverless. You make flashcards, you take notes, and maybe you find a tutorial where someone builds a project. So you follow along step by step, click here, type this, run that command, connect these services, and you feel productive. You're putting in the hours, you're learning, right? Then you start applying for jobs. You send out 50 applications, maybe 100. And if you're lucky, you get a callback. Then you get onto the interview. Things are going fine. And then they ask you something that you didn't prepare for. A system design question that you haven't even seen before. A scenario that's not in any tutorial and you freeze because you know what these services are, you can list them, but you have no idea when to use them. You don't know why you'd pick one over another. You never actually thought through a problem. You've only followed instructions. I've watched people stay in this loop for years, memorize services, watch tutorials, build projects by following steps, apply for jobs, get rejected, watch more tutorials, build more projects, apply again, and get rejected again. They think they need more knowledge, more certifications, more projects, but that's not the problem. The problem is they are learning at the wrong level. There's a well-known framework for how people develop skills. It's called the Bloom's Taxonomy. Researchers have been studying this for decades, and when you apply it to cloud engineering, everything just starts to make sense. Level one is memorization. So you remember what things are called. S3 stands for Simple Storage Service. EC2 is Elastic Compute Cloud. You can recall the facts. That's level one. Level two is comprehension. You understand how things work. You can explain the differences between a relational database and a NoSQL database. Here, you're not just reciting the definitions anymore. You actually get it. Level three is application. You build things. You can deploy an to instance. You can set up an S3 bucket. You can follow tutorial and make it work. You have projects on GitHub. Most people bounce between these three levels forever. They memorize, they understand, they build a project, they watch another video, they build another project, they memorize more services, and the cycle just repeats. And then they wonder why they're not getting hired, why interviews feel impossible, why they can list 50 AWS services, but they can't answer a basic design question. Here is why. Level one through to level three teach you the how. How to click the buttons, how to follow the steps, how to copy what somewhere else has already figured out. But that's not what gets you hired at a six figure level. What gets you hired at that level is the why. That's level four and level five. So level four is analysis. This is where you start comparing options and understanding trade-offs. You don't just know that RDS and DynamoDB are both databases. You understand when you pick one over the other. What are the constraints? What are the costs? What breaks if you choose the wrong one? Level five is evaluation. This is where you zoom out and ask the business questions. What problem are we actually solving? What does the company need? What's the risk if we get this wrong? What's the value? If we get this right, at level five, you are solving problems from first principles. You're analyzing trade-offs. You're connecting technical decisions to business outcomes. That's what six-figure engineers actually do. And that's what most tutorials will never teach you. So let me make this concrete because understanding the levels is one thing. Seeing them in action is another. Let's say you're learning about S3. Level one looks like this. S3 is simple storage service. It stores objects in buckets. There are different storage classes, standard, glacier, intelligent tiering, and the maximum object size is five terabytes. So here you memorize the facts, watch a tutorial, upload a file, feel like you've learned S3, you move on. Level five looks completely different. You start with a question. A company needs to store and serve millions of product images for their e-commerce website. How would I approach this? So now you're not just learning S3, you're actually thinking about real problems that businesses have. How do users access these images? They are on product pages, so they need to load fast. Slow images mean customers leave. That impacts revenue. What happens during a traffic spike? Black Friday, a million people hitting the same site at once. Can S3 even handle that? Do I need to add a CDN in front of it? 
What about the users in different countries? If the images are stored in one region, someone on the other side of the world might get slower load times. Does that matter for this business? How much will this cost at scale? A million images served billions of times. Storage cost, transfer cost, does the storage class matter? What about security? Who can upload images? Who can view them? What if someone uploads something malicious? And in 2026, there's also another question. Could AI add value here? Automatic image tagging for search, content moderation before images go live, visual similarity search so customers can find products that look like what they want. You're still going to learn what S3 is, you're still learning storage classes and bucket policies and lifecycle rules, but now you're learning it in context. You're attaching every piece of knowledge to a real problem, a real decision, and a real trade-off. So when you learn this way, you actually remember it because your brain has connected it to something meaningful. And that's the difference between knowing about S3 and understanding how to use it. And I know it's overwhelming, but this is what it takes. This is what level five engineering looks like. This is what I do. This is how I consult for companies, why I can command incredible rates. So how do you actually develop this skill? Because understanding the concept is one thing. Changing how you think is another. So here is what I want you to do. Next time that you're about to learn a new service, don't start with the documentation. Don't start with a tutorial. Start with a question. Write down what business problem does this solve? What would break if this service didn't exist? Then go deeper. What are the alternatives? When would I not use this? What are the trade-offs? And if you can't answer those questions, you don't understand the service. You've just memorized it. So here's an actual exercise. Take any tutorial project that you've already built. Now ask yourself this. What would change if this had 10 times the users? What about 100 times? Suddenly, you're thinking about scale, 10x thinking, about bottlenecks, about what breaks first. What if the company using this system was in a regulated industry, healthcare, or finance? Now, you're thinking about compliance, encryption, audit logs. What if the budget got cut in half? Now you're thinking about cost optimization, trade-offs, what's essential versus nice to have. Same project, completely different thinking. So do this for one service a day, one scenario a day, and in a month, you'll approach cloud architecture completely differently. Not because you've memorized more, but because you've learned to ask better questions. Now, here is the thing that will actually double or even triple your earning potential. And almost nobody talks about it. Everyone thinks becoming a six-figure cloud engineer is purely about technical skills. And yes, you need them. But the engineers who break into senior roles, architect positions, you know, jobs that pay them over 200K a year and above, technical skills alone don't get them there communication does. And here's what I mean. In a real company, you're not just talking to engineers, you're talking to managers, directors, sometimes even executives, sometimes even customers. And each audience cares about completely different things. So when you're talking to engineers, they're asking, will this actually work? How does it handle edge cases? What happens when something fails? What's the performance on the load like? So here you talk about architecture, trade-offs, failure modes. You go deep because they can follow and technical, right? When you're talking to managers, they're asking something differently. They're asking different questions. Will this ship on time? What resources do we need? What are the risks? What could go wrong? They don't need to understand how it works. They need to understand the plan. Give them a timeline, the dependencies, what you're worried about. That's what they care about. When you're talking to executives, they're asking exactly one question. Why should we spend money on this? And if you can't answer that in two sentences, then you're not ready to be part of that conversation. You want to lead with business impact, revenue generated, cost saved, risk mitigated, competitive advantages gained. Then stop talking. Same project, same technical work, free, completely different conversations. And the engineers who can translate technical work into business impact, who can explain what they built to anyone at any level, they're the ones getting promoted. They're the ones who get pulled into strategy meetings. They are the ones who become indispensable. And you can start practicing this today. Every time that you build a project, write down how you'd explain it to each audience. One paragraph for engineers, one paragraph for managers, one paragraph for executives. Put it in your portfolio, use it in interviews, and this alone will set you apart from 90% of candidates. So let me bring this together. Everyone asks the wrong question about becoming a six-figure cloud engineer. They ask, what services should I learn? What certifications should I get? What projects should I build? Those are all level one and level two questions. And level one questions and level two questions get the same level one outcomes. The right question is, what problem am I solving? 
And why does my solution make sense? Answer every single technical question that way, starting with the problem, understanding the constraints, evaluating the trade-offs, and you'll sound completely different from every other candidate because you'll be different naturally. Then you'll learn to communicate what you've built to anyone, engineers, managers, executives. Technical skills get you in the room, but communication skills get you promoted. And the people who make the leap to six figures or more aren't necessarily smarter than you. They're not typically working harder than you. They're not really grinding more tutorials or collecting more certifications. They've actually learned to think at a completely different level. And now you know how. As always, I'm rooting for you. Good luck.